First tonight at 8, a shocking end to a high-profile murder case in Tucson. The mistrial earlier this month for a convicted child killer. In his second case, the murder of six-year-old Isabel Sellis, who went missing 11 years ago. Christopher Clements was already sentenced to life for murdering another girl, 13-year-old Maribel Gonzalez. Tonight in a True Crime Arizona exclusive, we dive into the notebooks of one of the jurors who told us what really went on in the deliberation room and why the jury couldn't reach a unanimous decision. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney is here now, and Brianna, this is pretty unusual to be able to do this. Yeah, I have never experienced this to the point where the juror actually physically mailed me wow. the four notebooks and their instructions that they were given on the case. We talked on about it all on the phone, and we are keeping their identity anonymous to protect them, but now we know out of the 12 jurors, 11 of them believed Christopher Clements was guilty of murdering Isabel Sellis, only one juror would not budge. Thousands of words preserved in notebooks from juror number four. The first thing written in their notebook, circled and starred, said, my big question, how did Clements know where the body was? It was in 2012 when little Isabel Sellis disappeared from her home. She wasn't found for years until Christopher Clements led authorities to her remains in the desert, hoping for a deal in an unrelated crime case. It was the same area 13-year-old Maribel Gonzalez's body had been found after she went missing in 2014, and Clements was arrested for both girls' murders. In the jurors' notes, they circled a question Clements's fiancé was asked. During the time you have known Christopher Clements, did he mention that he had anything to do with the disappearance of Isabel? The juror then circled and starred the fiancé's response of, I don't remember. The juror noted they all asked the judge why the search for Isabel's remains was only two days and wrote the answer they got, confident, unlikely to find more. The defense tried to convince the jury Isabel's father was to blame and continually pointed to no DNA or fingerprints ever being found that connected Clements to Isabel's house or death. The juror wrote down, starred and circled that DNA or an eyewitness was not required and they didn't have to prove a motive for a conviction. Their jury instructions said all 12 jurors had to unanimously agree on first degree murder for a conviction. The juror starred the entire page of direct and circumstantial evidence and underlined it was up to them, the jurors, to determine how important evidence was regardless of if it was direct from a witness or circumstantial. The juror told me on the phone there was overwhelming circumstantial evidence that included Clements's phone in the area where Isabel's remains were found the night she disappeared, a note with her name on it under a rock at his home, countless pornographic images of young girls, and a search history of Isabel Sexy. But the juror said they left in tears because 11 of them believed Clements was guilty, but because of no DNA evidence, one juror believed he was not guilty and would not budge. That ended in a mistrial. Now, the juror told me what made them even more emotional was they had no idea Clements had been convicted for Mary Bell Gonzalez's death months prior and sentenced to life in prison. The jurors selected for this case were chosen because they had no knowledge of Clements's history and no bias, so the jurors truly believed he could get off the hook if they did not convict him. The juror said after the mistrial was declared, the judge told the upset jurors Clements will still be behind bars for the rest of his life. The Pima County Attorney's Office will have to order a new trial and date and a new jury starting this process all over the Sellis oh case. A fascinating glimpse, uh, Brianna. And yeah. you talked about the difference between direct evidence and circumstantial evidence. How is a jury supposed to weigh those two different things? So it's interesting. In Arizona, legally, direct and circumstantial evidence is supposed to bear the exact same weight when you're looking at a case. Wow. So the sh jury should be thinking that way, but of course, a juror is going to have their own mind when they listen and look at the evidence, they'll make it up for themselves. But legally, they are supposed to have those bear the same weight. So that's why the juror I talked to said there was so much circumstantial evidence. We put a lot of that weight into that. And so did 10 other jurors plus that juror. It was just the one just that didn't one believe person. it, right? Never in all these years have I ever seen no books from a member of the jury. This is a kind of a fascinating insight into what they were dealing Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.